Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I'll just start with a couple of announcements. We had a fabulous Women's Health Saturday just a few days ago and if you were not able to be here and join us, I can't make up the tasting of the food thing. We ate very, very well that day, had some amazing hors d'oeuvres. Um, I love when Chef Del writes a cookbook because then we have to taste all the new stuff and that's so much fun. But if you want to see the educational parts of it, we have taped it and it's available online. So just call the office and they will tell you how to do this. And it's the next best thing to being here if you weren't able to come to Columbus for our Saturday event. The second thing is we're just a month away from the start of the Diet and Lifestyle Intervention Course Summer Session, which features the celebrity instructors like Dr. Ralph Moss, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, Dr. Neil Barnard, Dr. Schultz, Dr. Goldhammer. I mean, the list of, of famous speakers, authors, and, and people who are great advocates for better health care and plant-based diets and using diet and lifestyle as an intervention. The celebrity lineup happens in the summer. So if you're planning to take that course or you want to talk about the Women's Health Symposium or any of the other cool things we do here, just send me an email at pampopper at msn.com. All right, so I talk about this a lot, conflicts of interest um, with federal agencies. The, the state's probably just as bad, but we'll focus on the federal government today. And because of these conflicts of interest, this is one of the biggest reasons why people get so many erroneous messages every day about diet, health, and medicine. The Centers for Disease Control is no exception. So I'm going to just tell you the story the way it unfolded for me. I uh, went to the agency's website, and here's what it says about the CDC. The CDC works 24-7 to protect America from health, safety, and security threats, both foreign and in the U.S., whether diseases start at home or abroad, are chronic or acute, cur curable or preventable, human error or deliberate attack. CDC fights disease and supports communities and citizens to do the same. CDC increases the health security of our nation. As the nation's health protection agency, CDC saves lives and protects people from health threats. To accomplish our mission, CDC conducts critical science and provides health information that protects our nation against expensive and dangerous health threats and responds when these arise. The CDC claims that the agency, its employees, its associates, have no conflicts of interest, and I think for a long time I wanted to believe that was the case. I was disillusioned about the FDA a long, long time ago, but I sort of still thought the CDC was independent, but it really is not. A recent article in the British Medical Journal reported that the CDC receives millions of dollars in donations and gifts each year. When asked about this, Tom Frieden, the CDC director, didn't even try to hide it. He didn't talk to the, the uh, reporter, but he did send an email, and this is what he had to say. Public-private partnerships allow CDC to do more faster. The agency's core values of accountability, respect, and integrity guide the way CDC spends the funds entrusted to it. And I would love to believe that. The problem is it just is not true. Even though undeserved, the CDC's reputation in the minds of most people is that it's an independent expert source of information and one that offers a guiding hand in developing public health policy. While most doctors and lay people don't know about the CDC's cozy relationship with drug companies and industry and conflicts with its advisory committee members, I'll come back to that in a second, even those who work at the CDC or former employees are shocked to find out that this is the case. Former employee Philip Lutter, infectious disease specialist at Mass General in Boston, says he was saddened, that was the term he used, to learn about the situation. I think a more appropriate response would be furious, actually. A 2009 Inspector General report should make us all concerned. According to the report, in the year 2007, 97% of the financial disclosure reports certified by the CDC for advisory committee members were not complete, and most of, had, most of them had more than one omission. The CDC failed to identify or to resolve financial conflicts of interest for 64% of employees. Many did not complete ethics trainings, did not comply with ethics requirements during committee meetings, and some even chose to vote when they clearly had conflicts of interest that should have kept them from voting. 
The CDC Foundation was established by Congress in 1995 and is upfront about this, which is in terms of its mission, it says um, it's to connect the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention with private sector organizations and individuals to build public health programs that make our world healthier and safer. That's a direct quote. The foundation reports funneling $620 million from private donors to the Centers for Disease Control since its inception. The foundation says its programs often begin with a CDC scientist who's matched with an outside funding partner. In other circumstances, private sector corporations realize they can accomplish their own goals more easily by working with CDC. The foundation advertises that its activities add value for its partners because it, quote, accelerates and expands important public health initiatives that align with our mission and work. And I took that right off of their website. Considerable money flows from drug and device makers to the CDC through the foundation. The foundation's 2015 annual report states that $157,250,105 was raised during the year. It was a record amount. The long list of contributors, we'd be here all day if I read it to you, but some highlights are Abbott, AbbVie, Amgen, Bristol-Myers, Squibb, Coca-Cola, Genentech, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Procter & Gamble, Sanofi, Aventis, and the Sugar Association of El Salvador. Wondering what they have to do with the CDC. $16 million of last year's money was donated for very specific purposes. Now, to, as an example of how this works on the specific purposes, a $600,000 donation from Genentech for the purpose of expanding testing and treatment for viral hepatitis um, was given a couple of years ago. Now, do the donations buy special favors? Well, Genentech makes, te makes test kits and treatments for hepatitis C. Two years after that very large donation uh, to the CDC Foundation, the agency issued guidelines that included the recommendation to screen everyone born between 1945 and 1965 for hepatitis C. One of the reasons cited was that now there are such better and newer effective treatments that we want to make sure we catch everybody who has hep C as early as possible. Um, now, those newer treatments cost a lot of money. For example, $84,000 for one new drug, according to the author of the BMJ article that I mentioned earlier, who goes on to say that this and other examples should raise red flags about where the CDC gets its funding. An even more obvious example is the CDC's blatant promotion of both the flu vaccine and Tamiflu, also made by Genentech. Posted on its website is a document titled, CDC says take three actions to fight the flu. The three recommendations that are on the site are to get a flu vaccine, to take action, actions to make sure that germs aren't spread, and to take Tamiflu if your doctor recommends it. The problem is both the flu vaccine and Tamiflu are useless according to the Cochrane collaboration. Cochrane, by the way, is, has its issues, but it's the most uh, uh, objective and uh, unencumbered by financial conflicts of interest uh, medical research organization on the planet. Cochrane's issued numerous reports about each, both the flu vaccine and Tamiflu, during the last few years. Cochrane reported in an article in the British Medical Journal that eight out of the ten studies claiming that Tamiflu was effective were never published. The two studies that were published were funded by Roche and concluded that, quote, I'll read this to you, Paucity of good data has undermined previous findings for Tamiflu's prevention of complications from influenza. Independent randomized trials to resolve these uncertainties are needed, end of quote. Additionally, the Cochrane researchers report that while Tamiflu has limited value, if any, it does cause nausea, vomiting, headaches, renal disease, and psychiatric symptoms. It's hard to reconcile Cochrane's views and what its research shows with information from the CDC's, uh, the enthusiasm the CDC has, seems to have for both flu shots and Tamiflu. Back to our friend Tom Frieden, who thinks that these public-private partnerships are great, he says that Tamiflu can, quote, and I took this right off the website, keep you out of the hospital and might even save your life. Well, that's a whole different story than what the Cochrane research shows. Now, nobody can definitively say that donations from industry are responsible for Frieden's comments or the agency's stance on flu vaccines and Tamiflu, but uh, the fact that the CDC Foundation takes so much money from Genentech, it's a Roche company and Roche owns uh, Tamiflu, uh, doesn't look good. 
As if this isn't enough, the revolving door between the Centers for Disease Control and the private sector also con uh, contributes to conflicts. Dr. Julie Gerberding was at one time the director of the CDC, which aggressively promotes vaccines. Today, she's president of Merck's vaccine division. Merck makes 14 out of the 17 vaccines recommended for children and nine out of the 10 vaccines recommended for adults by the CDC. And that's just one example. There are dozens of others. The bottom line is that the CDC has just become one more government agency completely corrupted and beholden to industry. I think the, the United States does need an impartial agency with no industry ties to evaluate medical research and to make health recommendations to the public. So we have one of two choices. Either the CDC should rid itself of the conflicts like the ones I've mentioned, or a new agency should be formed that is independent and the CDC can just be acknowledged as a partner to industry. I mean, it is. I don't know how else to interpret this information. Well, um, as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And uh, I will be back to you on Thursday with more news.